Well, it's been quite a while since I made one of these videos. I have a little tea left. It's really late at night, but I thought I'd uh, record this quick intro just to get it done with. Mm. Haven't seen me for a little while. I posted a video recently on some of the stuff I've been doing over the past uh, couple of months. Uh, but mainly, I have been completely rebuilding my basement lab slash studio into something that's a lot more usable for me and uh, certainly a more functional. And I, I have the ability to do a lot more down here now. Uh, I, I completely redid everything. Uh, again, see the previous video. But one of the reasons uh, I wanted to do this was uh, I wanted to get back into electronics like five years ago. Well, a little more than that now. I might have mentioned this once or twice before, but I've always been into electronics. I love 8-bit retro computing. Well, now we call it retro. For me, it was just computing because I grew up in that era. Love analog synthesizers, and I play music. I've played music uh, my entire life, pretty much. I, I took a long while off, and I'm slowly coming back to it because it's something I really enjoy, and I always have, and I need it in my life more. So, uh, one of the things I've been after and I wanted to learn to do was build guitar pedals. And over the past uh, four weeks or so, uh, that was one of the projects I was working on. I built a Klon Centaur clone, I'm calling it my Clone Tar. I think that's what other people, uh, or they call it the Clone, K-L-O-N-E. But it's basically the Klon Centaur Overdrive. Bought the kit and built it from scratch. Uh, actually, it's a really nice kit. Uh, the company that sells it, I bought it on Amazon, and I believe the company was Landtone, L-A-N-D Tone. Uh, I will find it and put it in the uh, description, or you'll see it on the screen here now, one of the two. But that was the seller there. I then tracked that seller back, and it looks like they also sell on uh, AliExpress. And I think I saw this exact kit on AliExpress for sale for, I want to say, $34, somewhere in that range. Ordered it, came in in about four weeks. Uh, immediately, it was packed really well. Opened it up, didn't watch a single video. I ripped it open, looked at the instructions, and started to, to try and build it. There were some parts that weren't greatly explained in the instructions, mainly amount, around the wiring and which wires go to which uh, parts of which switches. Uh, the pictures aren't quite clear. They're kind of covered up on the wires, so you can't see exactly where they go and there's no real description, so I'm gonna describe it here and show it so people can see it. I've since done a search around, which I probably should have done this before. There is another video out on YouTube, and I think it covers this exact one. I'm not entirely sure. I'm gonna go watch it now and see, and if it is, I'll do it. But I'm gonna go over what I found with this at a high level. I'm not gonna do a build through. I'm just, I'll open it up, show the insides, show the instructions, the components. I have some pictures of what it looked like when it came in. And then I'll just describe how I built it, and at the end, I'll jam a little with it and record, because I've got everything set up now to record, so enjoy. I should probably start calling this Coffee Tronics. So, down here, fresh cup of coffee. Tried to make this video a couple of nights ago got to my overhead camera and decided that it just it was really crappy quality it was an old webcam and I uh I dropped in a little better one a whole $40 one this time we'll see if the overhead looks any better it should stay in focus at least this one's an autofocus and the problems I had specifically so hopefully you can avoid them so we'll get to that next so here it is here is the the pedal itself pretty straightforward looks like any other Klon Centaur and there's the built version of it. What I did have issues with was trying to track down where these wires go. I'll pull out the instructions here. What you get with it is this rather lengthy sheet. And it's pretty good here. So we'll start at the beginning and I'll kind of walk through. Step one, all the low lying sort of parts, resistors and diode. Make sure your diodes are correct in the direction. Resistors, uh, just make sure you got the right values. What I did was I put them all on, tested it, made sure I got the right ones in the right place. I had no leftovers, and then I soldered them on. Next step, additional diodes. Again, make sure you get them on the right way. 
the IC sockets, pretty simple to do too. The next step is what threw me for a curve, specifically the electrolytic capacitors. So there's three numbers in here, 470, 47K, and 4.7K. And the way the 4.7s are labeled is 4K7. So you get 470, 47K, and 4K7. Needless to say, opportunity to mess up. I took that opportunity a couple times. Put them on, had a couple wrong, had to take them off, had to replace them. So I guess my only advice here is just like triple check on your, your capacitor values and make sure they're in the right place. The other was, is, are these capacitors aren't labeled the greatest? I wrote them out and lined up the numbers and made sure they were all in the right place. And again, I didn't have any leftovers. So I got through that section. This was pretty easy, soldering on the, uh, the potentiometers. The LED should not be kind of off at an angle that way. It should be straight solder on the leads for the battery and now you get to the more complicated part you get three pictures of the jacks you got this one here which doesn't show everything down here and then you've got this picture here and let's see if i can open it up so three pictures total here you get pull on the side yeah see all three of them yes so you got this one, this one, and this one. This is pretty good, so you can see the close-ups. Some things to take note. Note the little notch, the angle is up on this side right here. Use that as your reference. And this one kind of gives you a decent view of where the wires go here. Between them and the other one is the DC jack. You can't quite see where things go. Here, they don't even show you the other end. They just show you this side hopefully between this and this. So here's what I got. And I'll show you on mine here. For the 3PDT switch, if we can get a better view here, here's what I got. Basically, it comes out to black, red, white, and then inversed black, red, white. On this side, those three go to the outer three. Six, five, four are the numbers down there. And these three go to the, the left side, and it's one, two, three. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six is the order in which those go. The input, you got white to the right. You can remember that for this one. And on this one, you've got white to the left and black up on the top notch right there. For the power, it's... I guess the best way to tell, I, I honestly can't tell you the best way to tell on that. Uh, I figured it out based on this picture. Not terribly easy to do, so beware. That's probably an area they need to uh, help their instructions. They should really have separate breakout pictures for the jacks. But in the end, that's what you get. And I'll try and get it up close here again so you can see. Sorry for looking away. I'm trying to see on the monitor up there. It's actually in focus. It looks like it is. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, it's a $38 or so. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, pedal. Uh, for the price, it's actually pretty good. I, I say go for it. Uh, other build notes. Uh, there's some troubleshooting down here. It didn't help. This actually worked right the first moment I plugged in. It worked literally first time, and so I guess I did something right. Settings. Uh, I'm a rock guitar player, so my gain is up to 11. It always goes up. Treble, I like it right about in the middle. And the output, I adjust up and down depending on how I want to overdrive my amp. Uh, and that's it on the build logs. 